Cars are in two by two formation then, and we are going to get started. 15 laps of racing begins now. The second race of the weekend for the Euro NASCAR 2 category is underway. We've already got a car on the grass. Thankfully, keeps it straight and narrow. Vladimir Osiortis with a good start. He's got the inside line into turn one. NASCAR can't quite hold on around the outside. Gil Linster looks like he might have third place, although Paul Jufro is still on the inside. I think Jufro may have to settle for fourth position, however. Or maybe not. Gil Linster a bit uh, early on the brakes there into turn two. So Jufro still side by side with Linster. Martin Dubeck involved in that battle for third position as well as everyone picks their way through the first sequence of corners. Patrick Schauber moves up past Martin Dubeck, who... I think may have just had a tyre go on him or something because the car just did not turn. What has happened there with Dubek? Yes, look, I think the tyre's gone down and the full course yellow has just been declared on the circuit, but I'm not sure everyone's got that memo at the same time. Portie Pro briefly got past Linster but uh, has now corrected that course. These drivers now idle around. I believe it's uh, 80 kilometers per hour. And so, full course yellow has been declared. Two by two rolling start, number two of the race then. Our first restart and we go on to lap four in two by two formation once again. It's a run to the first corner between Siortzis and Nasca and Vladimir Siortzis just about holds it into the first corner. Nasca under threat from Gil Linster by the looks of it. Got uh, one of the cars going sideways there. That was Roman Yoli getting a tap. The number 65 car losing positions. I believe he was helped into a spin there, potentially by Jack Davidson in the 48 car. Looked like Davidson at least uh, ended up having to avoid Romagnoli. I don't know if he was the initial cause of the contact and Linster tried to dive up the inside of Alberto Nasca. Paul Dufro uh, takes advantage of that. Linster had to back out of the move and Dufro as a consequence of that regains his third position. As we continue to watch this battle and Dombrovsky coming under fire from Patrick Schubert. Claudio Romeggio Capelli is in front of both of them for now. So he's managed to get himself up into fifth place at the expense of Dombrovsky. And now looking to try and follow suit is Patrick Schauber. And Schauber manages to make that stick. Very nice driving. As we see Kenko Mura dive up the inside. Thomas Dombrovsky tries to stay around the outside. Can he do that through turn three? He has the inside line for turn four, but Kenko Mura has a nose ahead. Dombrovsky, though, with the inside line, should have the high ground here. Kenko Mura, though, holding on around the outside. Mura finds some pace on the outside at turn five, but just loses grip. Thomas Dombrovsky holding on to position for the time being then. But both Kenko Mura and Dario Casso, uh, two wily veterans in comparison uh, to Dombrovsky, as Claudio Romeggio Capelli is definitely under pressure now from the 27 car. Speculated that Patrick Schauber and Claudio Romeggio Capelli may end up in a scrap before the end of this one. And on lap 10 of 15, two-thirds distance, Schauber has definitely closed in sufficiently on Capelli. A turn through the kink at seven and into turn eight. We've seen Capelli dive up the inside of someone else uh, at turn eight. He's now got to worry about uh, the move being done to him. Patrick Schauber has got a good run out of turn 11. He's got the inside line. Claudio Romeggio Capelli straight wide at 11. And by the time they get to 12, it is Claudio Romeggio Capelli down a position. Thomas Dombrovsky has not been able to build a cushion over Kenko Mura. And Dario Casso has had enough waiting in the back of the queue. And oh dear, Kenko Mura sent into a spin by Dario. Kenko tried to take the apex. I'm not sure he was fully aware that Dario Casso had finally pulled the pin. And the two ended up meeting in the middle. Vladimir Osiortzis, who has driven an exemplary weekend within Euronascar 2, 
His weekend, of course, is far from over. He's got your NASCAR Pro to consider later on this afternoon here at the uh, Circuit Ricardo Tormo. But for now, Ziortis can take his lunch break strong in the knowledge that he is the Euro NASCAR 2 points leader. Through the final corner goes Vladimir Ossiortis in the number 5 car for Academy Motorsport. It has been a clean sweep in Euro NASCAR 2. Pole position in both races and the chequered flag first in both races for Vladimir Ossiortis. You're an NASCAR Pro, round number two, race number two of the weekend for these drivers. And it gets underway now. The lights have gone out and it's a good start from Gianmarco Ercoli. Ercoli with the early lead then. Hazeman's not able to repeat his feat from yesterday. Side by side for second place. Siortzis up to second. Spin further back in the pack. The 65 car involved in that, as is the 88. Christoph Lenz ends up going into the gravel as well. The 88 of Max Lanza also stuck there at Turn 1. Getting another look now at Turn 1. There's a lot to pick the bones from there, isn't there? But uh, I think two or three different incidents going on at once. Uh, Lanza went into the back, though, of Armetta and the 48 car involved in that as well. Time for our restart then, and let's see if Ercoli can hold off Hazemans, who's usually good on the restart. They wait for the lights to go out, and Hazemans has jumped him. Ercoli has not gotten the start he was hoping for, and Hazemans has driven off into the distance. The lights went out, and Hazemans said, OK, I'm off. Ercoli, I think, got caught napping a little bit there. He's now deep in the pack as everybody else filters through the first corner, but it's Hazemans that leads. Then it's Ercoli, uh, Lasser trying to go side by side for third position. I think Siortis has lost out as well. Yes, he's down to fifth position. Noted that there was some uh, body work down uh, on the main straight as well. So the driver's having to avoid that. That might minimize the possibility of side by side into turn one. But Amiros Siortis up the inside of Giorgio Maggi for fourth position. And he's got that done nicely. Now Maggi looked like he was struggling to slow the car down a little bit there to me. Whether that was just him breaking late or whether he's starting to have a long pedal as he had yesterday in the uh, in the NASCAR Pro race. I do hope that it's uh, just a one-off error rather than the re-emergence of an issue for Giorgio Maggi, but we'll have to wait and see. He's now under pressure as well from Vittoria Gorelli. Gorelli up the inside, and it's looking a little bit easy to pass Giorgio Maggi right now, but Maggi fighting back. He's on the outside through Turn 7 and into Turn 8. You've got Mark Goosens keeping a watching grief there as well behind. Gorelli then up into fifth place. Goosens trying to power around as well, but Giorgio Maggi just about holds on. He's lost out to Vittorio Gorelli. Is he going to lose out to Goosens as well? The answer is yes. Goosens has the nose. He has the car ahead, but he's under a lot of pressure from Siortis, who now has been afforded the inside line into turn two, and surely Siortis is going to get through here. Although Lasser is going to try and hold the pace, use the runoff around the outside of turn two. The kink at three, of course, then opens up to a right-hand bend at turn four, and that should favour Lucas Lasser. It does. Lasser manages to just about hold on, but Siortis immediately retaliates, and they did well to avoid each other there. Siortis tends to be very respectful in combat. He's not one to make any excess contact that he doesn't need to make. Oh, there goes Siortis. We just saw him dive to the inside, but once again, Lasser tries to hold him off goes deep into the corner and I think that's the opportunity Vladimir Siortis needed yes it is he's got the whole car ahead he's into third position then Siortis moves up into P3 side by side for the lead meanwhile what's happening with Liam Hazeman Hazeman has lost a 1.6 second lead over the course of one lap Giamarco Ercoli is our new race leader the number 54 car Giamarco Ercoli through at turn one or before they even got to turn one I'm just hearing now that this is a race control order in regard to Liam Hazemans. He's been ordered to give position back due to the start. 
No, I think the toe from uh, Coley has actually brought Hazeman into a move for the lead. And sure enough, Hazeman dives up the inside. They're side by side out of turn two. Oh, Hazeman's onto the gravel. Contact between Ercoli and Hazeman. And has Ercoli got damage? It looked like that car was sitting down wrong. And Hazeman's has damage. He's gone off. Hazeman's is into the gravel on the exit of turn four. Oh, what a turn up for the books this is. Now, keep an eye on the right rear corner of the Ercoli car. He has got a puncture. Ercoli does have a puncture. And why hasn't he pitted? Surely it would make sense to just pit. Oh, goodness me, what drama. The lights will go out momentarily and we will be racing once more. They concertina towards the back of the pack. And they're off, and I think it's a poor start, potentially for Seortis. It looked like he went for a gear shift that wasn't that sweet. And sure enough, Lucas Lasser is in the lead. But can Seortis hold on on the inside line? He's going to break as late as humanly possible as they go through the first corner. It's still side by side between Lucas Lasser and Vladimir Seortis. Seortis had to settle for second place. Vittorio Garelli is there in third. In fourth place, it is Mark Goosen in fifth place. Martin Dubek, okay. Vittorio Garelli uh, looks to the inside of Vladimir Osiortis and he can't quite get it done. Siortis though taps into a spin. Siortis is around. Vittorio Garelli loses out in all of that as well. Second place then for Mark Goosen. Lucas Lasser leads the way. Mark Goosen now in second place. Or is he? Because there goes Martin Dubek. Dubek gets himself up into second place. What a drive this is from Martin Dubek. My goodness me, it's all kicking off here at the circuit, Ricardo Tormo. Unfortunately, we've lost uh, Vladimir Osiortis there. He was sent into a spin. He won't be on the podium today. This is the nature of the NASCAR Wheel in Euro Series. It's never predictable. It's always entertaining. And it's going to be, for the first time this year, Speedhouse and Lucas Lasser on the top step of the podium. Speedhouse claimed their first win last year and they're going to win once more in 2023. It's Lucas Lasser that sees the checkered flag first, a victory for Lucas. Second place then for Martin Zubek. Mark Goosen takes P3 ahead of Vittorio Garelli, who fell out of the podium with that contact. 